Good morning. Good morning. I'm Shanika Fondre. Good morning. I'm Shanika Fondre. I'm the Federation Area F Council Block Unit member. So before we get started, I would like to say that this is being recorded on Urban League's Facebook page as well as website. You can find it on Facebook at backslash ULSTL1918. The members of the Urban League Federation of Block Units would like to welcome you to our 89th Annual Assembly. Today is historic as we recognize our first Juneteenth national holiday. As such, our theme for today is Juneteenth, unity, hope, and peace. We would like to officially begin with a devotion and opening prayer by our chaplain, George Levan. George Levan is a property owner in the 27th Ward of the city of St. Louis. He currently resides in Area F and serves as the secretary for the block unit 1017. As a long-term resident, he believes in the goals and vision of the Federation and makes it his daily mission to create a positive change for his neighborhood. He is a faith member of and deacon of St. Matthew Lutheran Church located in Walnut Park. Let us all welcome George LeVan as he offers us a devotion and opening prayer. Good morning, everyone. Yes, it is truly a joy and a blessing for us to all be together here again one more time. Amen. 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 On this day, we'd like to open up with a word of prayer on this Juneteenth holiday in the year 2021, also known as Emancipation Day, Jubilee Day. Black Independence Day, and as of June 17th, 2021, officially in the United States, signed by President Joseph R. Biden, recognized as Juneteenth National Independence Day. Heavenly Father, we come to you with bowed heads and humbled hearts thanking you for allowing us to be here today, calling us together for the works and the task in which you have placed upon us to allow us to do in our communities to actively empower our residents, churches, businesses, block by block to help improve the socioeconomic conditions civil rights access opportunities and physical environment throughout the entire metropolitan St. Louis area. Continue to be with us in all that we do. May your will be done, lead, guide, and direct us. Be with the new members that are being sworn in today. Heavenly Father, be with our honorees Bless them for their hard works, efforts, and dedications. And may we all come together today on one accord. And may your will be done. Amen. Amen. Next, we have part of the 
by Nully and the Traveling Salvation Show to professional singing groups that are based in Illinois. Miss Walker has been singing since and is always looking for new venues and opportunities to showcase her skills. Let us all stand and welcome Courtney Walker with our African American anthem with every voice and sing. Try to be a little loud so y'all can hear me over the face. All right. <clears throat> Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise. High as the listening skies, let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song. Full of the hope that the present has brought us. Yes. Sing, yes. Sing so to our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road. Rod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloom, that. 
Now we will have greetings from our Urban League Vice President of Public Safety and Community Response. So we won't have greetings from just you. Okay, so we will have greetings from our Federation of Black Units Director, Barakan Shagab. Okay, <laughs> so we will have greetings from our Federation of Black Units President, Christina Hazley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to give Miss Shanika um, Fredane, am I correct? Give her applause. I appreciate that. <clears throat> We are all doing a wonderful job as we are um, sitting here. I am um, I'm ecstatic. I really am. I am excited. I am overwhelmed, I believe, and uh, just joyful for today. One, uh, we know what happened today, as Mr. Lovan shared with us, and that's a glorious thing. Uh, two, uh, there are so many activities going on today that just justifies and give us um, the understanding. And we knew who we were with the people. We knew we were free, but we free according to the United States now, you know. So in their eyes and to the, every nationality, every different, you know, uh, race, creed, to everyone. And, uh, but I want to give greetings. We know that it's an exciting day today. So uh, the Urban League is uh, sponsoring a, um, a uh, Juneteenth thing with a march and everything like everything. So Mr. Clark is outside with that. We sent uh, Farrakhan also to assist with that. And so I'm bringing you greetings on behalf of the Urban League President and CEO, Mr. McMillan. He had another event also today. I'm bringing greetings on our Vice President, Public Safety and Community Response, Mr. James Clark. And I'm bringing you greetings on our Director, uh, Farrakhan Shigal uh, of the Federation of Black Units. And I'm bringing you greetings from myself, Christina Hazley, uh, the President of the Federation of Black Units and a proud chair, and a proud chair of uh, St. Louis County, but uh, of St. Louis County Block Unit 1712. So I want to share one thing. I did not know, and I know many people didn't. I've lived here all my life in and out of different states, but I did not know how powerful the Federation of Block Units was and is going to be again in the city of St. Louis. Uh, I didn't know when they stood and said something or politicians used to know that they had to go through the Federation of Block Units before you was gonna get elected, before you was gonna move up or wherever you thought you was gonna go. So that's where we wanna take it back to. And I can say that it is headed back that way. This group of people in this room and the new people, all you new members, there's Miss Courtney, we brought in from Belleville, she's a new member. So we know you, you're not here by accident or it just happened, you're here because God sent you here. And I just wanna bring you greetings and thank you uh, for um, weathering the storm. We had to rebuild, we had to revamp, we had to bring it back, we had to look at the bylaws, we had to look at the block hit, we had to look at all our procedures and things. And I think every organization had to do that. And so now we are ready, people are joining. To let you know, people are joining left and right. So you are in these positions to help us move this thing forward. So I just wanna thank you again. And now we're going to uh, bring up our vice president of public safety, Mr. James Clark, and he's going to give you greetings. Good morning. morning. Y'all all right? I want to first start by giving thanks and honor to God, who's the giver and the sustainer of all of our lives. Uh, then I want to have a moment of silence for our ancestors who lost their lives on the African continent, for those who did not survive the Middle Passages, and for those who lost their lives on American soil, and for those of us who continue to sojourner to repair the atrocity of slavery, which is the worst atrocity that man has ever heaped on man. So let's have a moment of silence.
Happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth, yes. And before I go into my brief remarks, brothers and sisters, we've got to make Juneteenth mean something. We've got to make Juneteenth mean something that resonates in our community. From the, from the upper class all the way down to our brothers and sisters trapped in addiction right now on Grand and Montgomery. Juneteenth has got to mean something to us. That's my prayer. On behalf of President Mike McMillan, I want to greet you all, want to congratulate those who are being sworn into office. I uh, want to then commend Sister Hazley and Brother Farrakhan for holding the Federation of Block Units together. Let's give them some love on that. You know, I have been in, in my position with the Urban League for just a little over a year. And I came before you shortly after and made a commitment to you. You can't talk about public safety and not talk about organizing at the neighborhood level. You can't. We are going to work to spread the word and to spread the organizing at the neighborhood level through the Federation of Block Units. Right now, we are working with neighborhood churches through a program called Grill to Glory. Right now, we have 82 churches that, are, that have committed to firing up a barbecue grill, not the first and the third or the second and the fourth. The, 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 the motto is we're moving towards every church every Saturday. And we think that as the churches come on board, we're giving their information to Brother Farrakhan, and we're going to start having block unit meetings at those churches. We're going to put the Federation of Block Units on steroids and expand the, the Federation. I don't think we have a political problem. We have political issues. I don't believe we have an education problem. We have education issues. In our community, we have a family problem. We have a neighborhood problem. And the best organization in position to address those two, Federation of Block Units. You have held it down. Now it's time to rebuild St. Louis from the bottom up. I've said a million times that you cannot raise St. Louis from the middle. Because if you start at the middle, only the middle and the top go up. If you raise it from the top, only the elite go up. But we have to go all the way down to the bottom, all the way down to the neighborhood level and organize. The police can't solve this problem. 70 police officers have turned in their badges in the last three months. 70. It's a very visible thing to be in the neighborhood and just look around and see how few police officers you see driving through the neighborhood now. You all, Federation of Block Unit members, the neighborhood churches, we have got to be able to assert ourselves right now like never before. So on behalf of our president and CEO, Mike McMillan, I congratulate those that are being sworn in, but it's Federation time. It's Federation time. Thank you very much and God bless you.
um, like you said, get, the, get excited because uh, they put a lot of effort and work in rebuilding our city and it will be rebuilt through the Federation of Block Units. <clears throat> they put a lot of effort and support and uh, work in uh, rebuilding the Federation of Block Units. Uh, and uh, so what I was saying was just get ready, be excited, and uh, be ready to support your block unit and the surrounding communities. At this moment, we're going to uh, swear in our officers. So we have our 21, 20, 21 to 23, they're two year, um, uh, two year agreements to uh, serve in their roles and officers for the Federation of Board of, Federation of Block Units officers. And so they should all be sitting right over here. We're gonna ask everyone up to come up. Everyone will be sworn in together. And so we'll try to keep it, we'll kind of just have everybody kind of come up this way and starting with your account, just probably put everybody kind of in their titles and moving forward with like that. And so what will happen is um, our judge was not able to make it. And so our um, vice president of public safety will swear us in. And I think that is uh, most, most fitting. And uh, so no, you like we know, God will work this out and he will do it the way he wants to do it, not the way we plan for it. So I'm going to ask everyone, so when he, he will read uh, what's on the, um, on the O, and when you get down to the part where he asks you to accept your position, then you will say your position that you've been elected for and your name. And we'll all say that out loud as we accept our position. So if we can have the, uh, the executive board members to come up. Uh, we need the first vice president, Ms. Amanda. We need the second vice president. Third vice president. Oh, man. Uh, we need, uh, the second vice president. We need the third vice president. Just to let you know, the first vice president, you can move our over is Amanda Davis. And Amanda Davis is for area A, I mean area B. Uh, we have Tracy Hill, which is area L. We have George Lovan, which is area F also. Okay. We have uh, our reporting secretary, which is Ashley Langston. Uh, we're going to keep Ms. McCoy, we're going to count Ms. McCoy. Ms. McCoy is correct, so we're doing all the questions to make sure nothing happens. So we're going to keep our separate, but she'll be at this end. We have Lovey Davis, who's our correspondent secretary. <laughs> we have Craig Smith, which is the chair of the second.
Rosalind died. Rosalind died. Oh no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just moved to the other side. Okay, good too. Okay, we can't get behind Mr. Alright. You better get hit by a six. And don't forget Miss Christina. I'm going to have to footnote this. <laughs> that um, if, had I known, um, I would have dressed to do that event outside and I would have been dressed for this occasion. You blend in very well. I blend in very well. You got Thank the you. right colors and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but you, you, you know those those that know me, like Brother Lovan knows, you know, I don't let my narrative outpace my action. Too often, our narrative outpaces our action. So I want you all to feel free to ask for what you need. But then when you get what you ask for, <laughs> utilize it. You know, I, I know Brother Farrakhan works hard to make sure that when you all need the food boxes, he gets you the food boxes. And so we want to continue that connection because we're up against something right now. And the Federation is direly important if St. Louis is to ever become a civil and harmonious and unified community once again. And y'all, we got to act now. We have got to act now. I'm 54 years old. I'm a part of the last generation that saw a functioning, peaceful African-American community. I'm a part of the last generation. I grew up on Bacon Street. We were poor, but we were not violent. We owe it to our ancestors and to the generations to come to leave our mark. We're the last generation that saw a community where if you were walking down the street, and you were on a block that a church was on, you couldn't curse. That's right. <laughs> I can remember my mother waking me up and saying, boy, I need some eggs. Go find some eggs. I would go from door to door to door. My mama said, you got some eggs? Next house. My mama said, you got some eggs? Next house. My mama said, you got some eggs? I would go from block, two blocks, three blocks, four blocks. And if someone said, yeah, how many she need? Two. <laughs> I would write the address down, take it home, and stick it on the refrigerator. When my mother got paid, we took them the eggs. There was a time when we called guns Saturday night specials. Because the only time you heard gunshots in the black community was late Saturday night. We have to take responsibility for what's going on right now. Because we're the last generation that has a reference point. If you've never seen peace, there's no way you can create it. After us, crack cocaine hit. Families were obliterated and gun violence became accepted and expected. 
crime became accepted and expected. Brothers and sisters, they're not going to come into our neighborhoods and bring civility back. They're not. We have to stand up in our neighborhoods and bring civility back. And the tip of the civility spear is not the police. If the police could do it, they'd have done it a long time ago. If a school district can do it, they'd have done it a long time ago. If an elected official could do it, if we only had a black mayor, we had three. We have had aldermen, we've had state reps, and they've all done a good job. They've done outstanding work, but we don't have a legislative problem. We have a family problem and a neighborhood problem. And the answer to that is to my right and to my left. Y'all on the front line. We're working with the churches. We're going to do all that we can do to get these block unit meetings going. We're going to give y'all yard signs. We're going to give y'all t-shirts. We're going to give y'all what y'all need so y'all can stand up tall. And we can lead St. Louis to higher ground. We are now going to be sworn in. And um, you shall be expected to represent the chapter on many and varied occasions. You must always remember to speak not as an individual, but as an officer of the most respected and the most important organization in your community. The Federation of Block Units has got to become the most respected. It's respected now, but it's got to become the most respected organization in the community people will look to you for inspiration you will be obligated to preserve the peace and harmony amongst your membership in my division here at the urban league there's no division my staff know you cannot be cancerous amongst the team you're not going to always be right. So when you're not right, guess what? You got to swallow that humble pill. Okay? I learned that a long time ago. Devoting whatsoever time is necessary to prepare and execute an agenda. It doesn't make a sense to prepare one and not execute. We've had a whole lot of plans in our neighborhoods and in our community that have never been executed. You are expected to conduct each meeting in an orderly and business-like manner. You should ensure that all courtesies are extended to the chapter's guests and speakers. It is you, it is your responsibility to make sure that your committees are continuously alerted and aware of their responsibilities. You must see and receive pass and pass on information concerning the National Urban League, Urban League affiliates, the Federation, local Urban League, and block units, its programs, projects, and objectives. To the membership, you should ensure that all correspondence is handled promptly and correctly. It is your responsibility to hold all, to hold, to call all executive council and board meetings with regular and in order to determine your organization's policies and programs. In general, you will do all things within the framework of your capabilities to put good and, and put it to good and constructive use. All things that will benefit the Urban League, and the Federation of Block Units. Yes, this office requires the ability and energy, but rewards are great. It's going to require a lot of ability and energy, but the rewards are great. 
Do y'all know how hard it was for us to get 82 churches <laughs> to agree to put a barbecue grill in front of their church every Saturday? How hard it was to get Cisco Foods to donate 100 cases of hot dogs and buns every month? How hard it was to get these corporations to donate 85 brand new barbecue grills? That was hard. We did it. And the reward is high. The work that you all put in, the rewards are high. That's why I commend Sister Hazley and, and, and Brother Furkan and each one of you because you all have held this thing tight. The hardest thing to do with our people? No, we know it. It's, it's, it's all us in here. The hardest thing it is to do with our people is to keep us tight. It's hard. You will, I ask you to accept the responsibility of the office and each of you if you can say the you say what your office is i ask you to accept the responsibility of the office of if you can raise no no let's let's go in order yes ma'am Craig Smith, South City Council Chair. Deborah Clark, City Council Secretary. Yuta Rogers, Area Chaplain of St. Louis City. Betty Price, St. Louis County Chaplain. Rosalind Dodd, Vice Chair, City Council. Teresa Wilkins, Chair, City Council. Jennifer Hayes, Vice Chair, City Council. Okay. I ask you to accept the responsibility of the office. Do you accept that responsibility? Yes, I do. All right. Please applaud the incoming officers for the Federation of Block Unit 2021. Yeah, did did you want to get a group shot? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we just gonna give it a few moments for everyone to get back to their seats. Um, we're gonna move this program along because we know it's a um, a. Um, parade and everything getting out started and a lot of events going on today and we want to make sure everyone gets to those events in a timely manner. The next thing, um, I just want to share a few words, uh, but I don't think there's much for me for you to say the importance of the Federation of Block Unions. I think uh, Mr. Clark has done that well. And I, I think I just want to say ditto, keep that in mind, because your role is vital to the Federation of Block Unions. Is very important because we are to shape our blocks, not the people that 
uh, come into our blocks and stay one year, stay six months, move around, come back. If you're a homeowner or you are renting from a homeowner and you're in that home, we are to shape that block. So it's very important that the Federation, which is established in 1932, and it's been around for 89 years, and next year will be our 90th anniversary. It was, it was used, the Federation was established as a venue to bring people together regarding the concerns of the blocks. So it's still the same issue that's going on. It's still things that we need that are important to us, things that we need to make change. So I just wanted to, I didn't want to go too much in it because I didn't want to take away what he stated, but you're very important to this organization. You're very important to the Urban League. And, uh, and I, I just want to remind you of that. And your positions are very vital. Do not take them short or lightly uh, because you will make changes. You will make changes. It may not happen immediately, but they will surely to happen. And how I can say that is because I've been with the organization probably since 2014 or 15, and I've seen it change greatly, going back to the state as it used to be. So I want to thank you on that. How to start a block unit. I want just to show a few words. Anyone that wants to start a block unit, one, we have our meetings. We have our board meetings every first Wednesday of the month. And those meetings are for all the board uh, board officers and anyone that likes to be invited to that meeting. If we have a speaker or how we, how we kind of have it set up is that once you inquire about being a block unit member, and you can go to the Urban League SCL website and one of the Federation of Block Units, and there's a membership thing, inquiry, sign into that. That'll come directly to us, and then we'll send you information regarding that. And then we'll invite you to the board meeting, and we'll invite you to our monthly, um, our monthly, I'm sorry, our monthly uh, orientation and training. Our orientation and training is every second Thursday of the month from 6 to 8 and every third Saturday at 9 a.m. Right now, we're still doing everything Zoom, and we'll continue to Zoom until the end of the year, until we're, unless we decide to change and have those in person. But right now, they're all Zoom. So we'll ask you to attend one of those meetings, and then we'll ask you to attend a board meeting. And then after that, we will make sure you get your block unit number and release you to your council. So it, it's not very hard to establish a block unit. The cost to establish a block unit is $25 a year. And uh, I, I've always thought that that seems like much, that's very, that's very minimum to be a part of an organization like the Urban League of Federation of Block Unions. One, when you pay the $25, it entitles you to a, uh, a member of the Urban League, the Urban League membership. It entitles you to membership to the Federation of Block Units. And another thing is that $25 is not individual. It is for everybody on your block. So if you got 100 people on that short block, and y'all buy them pennies up and pay $25, everybody can become a member. So there is no reason when people say, oh, we can't afford a, this, this, that, or oh, I'm on fixed income. No, it's $25. Get everybody on your block. Give a dollar, give a penny, give 50 cents a quarter, and I believe you can join. I, I believe you can do that. <clears throat> so it's very simple, and those are, um, those are the easy ways to join the Federation of Block Units. Uh, you will get more, inf more information regarding... Um, further of what all are entitled to do when you attend that orientation and training. We are going to move forward and we're going to ask our uh, songstress Courtney Walker to come back and sing Somewhere Over the Radio Over the Rainbow. And immediately after Miss uh, Walker will uh, have an introduction of our speaker and then she will lead us into our 21, 20, 21 through 23 uh, Federation of Black Unit Year with her message. Miss Courtney Walker. Hi, Ken. Let me make sure I'm loud. Everybody can hear me. You can't hear me? Is that is that better? Is that better? All right, here we go. All right. <clears throat> Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there. A place that I heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and those dreams that you dare to dream 
really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops high above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me somewhere over the rainbow. Bluebirds fly, birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, why can't I? Birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? Thank you, Miss Walker. That was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Somewhere, oh, I'm sorry. Somewhere over the rainbow. And uh, when I, I spoke with Miss Walker and she told me uh, what the other song that she was going to offer, I thought I knew something about that song. And I asked her, um, "Is that the, the song to the winds?" And she said, "Yeah." And then I said, "Well, I don't, I don't think I really know what that song had ties to this event." So I researched that song like we know we can do with Google and found out really more of the understanding. So I did not have a clear understanding of who wrote that song, why it was written, and how it ties so much to what we're going through now. So please take time to go uh, research, research that song and, uh, and uh, get clearer understanding. And I think that's us as a people. We need to really know what we're representing, what we're singing, what words are coming out of our mouths, uh, everything. Because sometimes we just go forth with things but don't have a clear understanding. But I thank you again. Now it's time for our speaker, Ms. Sierra Lynette Simmerell. She is the youngest member appointed to her second term on the Civilian Oversight Board by Mayor Lida Cruson. She serves as the vice chair of the board and represents District 1, which include wards 2, 3, 21, and 27. She has been a longtime activist for change within the communities that she serves daily. Sierra is a graduate of Sodan International Studies High School, a uni uh, University of Missouri St. Louis in a, uh, graduate with a Bachelor of Arts in Communications, a Master's of Arts in Organizational Development from Western University, and working on her second Master's in Human Resource Development. She interned with the St. Louis American and has written several columns on community issues. Sierra currently works for U.S. Bank in CDA, IRA business line. After working in various cap cap capabil capacities at the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis and North Newstead Association as a facilitator for the neighborhood ownership model started in 2011 in North Point, Walnut Park East West neighborhoods, her volunteer activities include giving back to her home, community in North St. Louis 27th Ward and second wards feeding families, speaking at meetings like the Urban League and the Federation of Block Units, community cleanups, volunteer secretary, assisting residents with city resources and collaborating with neighborhood organizations. Sierra has served as a youth representative of Area Elf Council, Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis for 15 years. After volunteering at the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis Food Pantry daily while taking college courses, Sarah found the need to help the community. She was a program coordinator for the St. Louis Connecting and Assisting Neighborhoods in North City, which was focused on youth. Sarah's task was to provide programs for children ages 4 to 15 years old and adult activities. She managed baseball, martial arts, reading programs, and adult um, aerobics for families in North City. 
Sierra is also an executive board member of Young Voices with Action, which focuses on mentoring young people and providing opportunity. Sierra was born and raised in North Point. She feels it is her duty to serve the community. Sierra received the Earl E. Howe Community Service Award, Next Door Hero Award, and the Neighborhood Star, an award from the Circuit Attorney's Office for acting as a mediator between the police and neighborhood residents. To give us a word of wisdom. Get this in position. Good morning. Good morning. Can you all hear me well? Yeah. I know the fans are blowing. Greetings to you, family. Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis, Federation of Block Units current and future leaders of the St. Louis community. I'd like to thank Urban League CEO, Mr. Michael McMillan, Director of the Federation of Block Units, Mr. Farrakhan Shigar, and President of the Federation of Block Units, Ms. Christina Hazley, for inviting me to be the keynote speaker for the 89th Annual Assembly. My name is Sierra L. Simrel. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I belong to Area F Council, Block Unit 1383 in North Point neighborhood. I wear many titles, the first being Vice Chairwoman of the Civilian Oversight Board of the City of St. Louis. However, my most important title is daughter. I am a product of North City, graduate of St. Louis Public School, Soldan, graduate of the University of Missouri, St. Louis and Webster University. I am proud to speak with you today on the 89th Annual Assembly for Juneteenth. I've attended the Annual Assembly many years with my parents, not realizing the impact it had on my life. Growing into adulthood, I began to understand those lessons of love thy neighbor and investing into the land of our ancestors. I believe in the foundation of building legacy so much that I became a homeowner three years ago. Each year that I've attended the assembly, there have been lessons of how communities are built and how to sustain them long term. It's a pleasure to participate with the neighbors in the Block is Beautiful contest, workshops and breakout sessions for various activities. Before I speak to the importance of us gathering today on this Juneteenth celebration, I must give honor to God. I smile knowing that God led me to be delivering a message of unity, community empowerment, and healing for all under the sound of my voice today. I am a believer that without God, nothing is in order, and before any journey, he is to lead the way. I hope my message for Juneteenth today reaches each of you 
and assures you that the next generation is ready. Being a part of a younger generation, I've grasped the understanding of how important survival is being an African-American woman. Growing up on the city's north side, it's a privilege to earn a degree and return to your community as an advocate. I come from a community that believes in teaching generational knowledge, preparing you for leadership and leading by example. In order for us to be the best version of ourselves, we must lift each other up. Marion Wright said that education is for improving the lives of others and leaving your community and world better than you found it. I believe we all serve a great purpose in our roles as community leaders. Each one of you participating today has an amazing opportunity to be involved in building history for our legacies. We have an opportunity to learn where we've come from and prepare for where we are heading. We have the blueprint to learn from the challenges faced before our time. Learning from organizers about preparation and how to build a chair when all are taken from the table. I don't believe things happen by accident. I'm a believer of how you evolve from that moment. It's time to embrace the history of our ancestors and water those seeds deep within our souls. Maya Angelou emphasized that you can't know where you are going until you know where you've been. Many generations are present today that can recall events impacting their spirits greatly. Today, I'm here to remind you progress has been made and nothing has been in vain. The blood that pumps through our bodies was once on land we didn't own and businesses we couldn't enter. After that blood and sweat shed from our ancestors, now we have businesses, land, opportunities, and education that could be carried on for generations. When I think of how far we've come as a community, I think of the significance of Juneteenth being celebrated. Juneteenth is known as Freedom Day for slaves that endured the harshest conditions any human could bear. This day is a celebration of abolishment of slavery accompanied by ratification of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. The former slaves celebrated on June 19, 1865, upon learning the message of freedom from Major General Gordon Granger from the Union Army in Galveston, Texas. Juneteenth commemorates the spirit and the quest of African American freedom, emphasizing education, art, intellectual achievement, through reflection, rejoicing, and manifestation of more substantive economic and just citizenry, the people of the state, offices of government and educational, commercial, political, civic, religious and fraternal organizations. I'm here to remind you that Juneteenth means rising above your current circumstances. I'm here to remind you that Juneteenth is to be celebrated every day. I'm here to remind you that freedom is here to stay. The historical legacy of Juneteenth shows the value of never giving up hope in pressing times. We all have deep concerns for our friends, families, neighbors, and communities that are often uncertain. I'm sure some nights are longer than others when safety is involved. I know that some days are harder than others, however, we must remain intentional in our quest for good. We must, we must maintain hope, instill love, and respect one another. We owe it to ourselves to plant our feet firmly on the ground when things are rocky. Speaking to you for Juneteenth this year means being empowered from enslaved people who sought to unify families, establish schools, build communities, and run for political office. The resilience and strength of our ancestors is remarkable. Juneteenth is celebrated 
to remember how far we've come over 165 years and how we manifest the next. We have a responsibility that shouldn't be taken lightly when we think of our heritage. We owe it to our children to educate them on their history that isn't taught in schools. We have a mission that continues to grow with innovations and changes to our community. The month of June also marks 100 years since the Tulsa race massacre happened, impacting the lives in one of the most highly segregated cities. Most of the city's 10,000 black residents lived in a neighborhood called Greenwood, named after a town in Mississippi. Greenwood included a thriving business district, sometimes referred to as the Black Wall Street. This area became a safe haven for African Americans after the Civil War. O.W. Gurley, a wealthy Black landowner, purchased 40 acres of land in this area, in Tulsa. He began with a boarding house and word spread about the opportunities available. J.B. Stratford built a 55-room luxury hotel bearing his name in the largest Black-owned hotel in the country. A.J. Smitherman, founder of the Tulsa Star, a Black newspaper headquartered in Greenwood that became instrumental in establishing the district's socially conscious mindset. When I reflect upon our history, we have the ability to thrive in any situation. Our marathon has just begun for our communities and what is ahead. Reflection upon these two impactful pieces of history, we look forward to what is possible for our city. Even though we are faced with uneasiness and safety concerns, we must continue to push for change. Former President Barack Obama said, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time we are the ones we're waiting for we are the change that we seek the seeds of change are within our spirits and require watering we are the change within everything that's involved in every moment that counts when you look in the mirror today remember you are the change Change is looking out for neighbors, checking on the elderly, being involved in your block unit, patronage of a local business, participating in all elections. I'm here to empower you today to let you know change is possible. We have the ability to rebuild our communities and invest and be determined to draw strength from one another. It's our duty to leave a legacy of unity, hope, and peace in our communities. When I think of how powerful our city is, I'm reminded how we elected the first African-American Congresswoman to the first district, the first African-American female circuit attorney, and the first African-American female mayor. Our city is setting a standard for what can be done in years to come with your most powerful voice, which is voting. We collectively made history in our city by making a choice, watering our seeds. Maya Angelou once said that all great achievements require time. We have the time to rebuild block by block organizing neighborhoods, communicating ideas, purchasing homes, reinvesting our children to the public education system. Our communities will thrive fully charged from our potential, skills, knowledge, and strength being unified. In closing, I want to water the seeds within your spirits for our communities to grow and thrive. This Juneteenth forward, I want you to lead your communities in a unity being unified as a whole. Lead your community in hope with expectations and desires for certain things to happen. Lead your community, I'm sorry, spread peace, which is freedom from disturbance. 
former First Lady Michelle Obama once said, history has shown us that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. Be courageous, be unified, remain hopeful, and spread peace among your neighborhoods. Thank you for allowing me to participate in the celebration of Juneteenth and the Urban League's 89th Annual Assembly. Thank you, Ms. Simmerill. Thank you, thank you. As I was listening, all I can say is one thing. That's what looks a baby that grows up under the Federation of Black Youth. That's what our children should expire and come and blossom and grow and grow, that they become responsible citizens of our block, of our neighborhood, of our city, of our state, of the United States of America. That's what it should be. And we know she is from Area F Council, which is the chair of Miss Loreen Griffin and prior chair Miss Mary Davis, and they really built that uh, council up and continue building. So we thank you, thank you, thank you for that message. So she said, "We are the change. We're not waiting for the next door neighbor. We ain't waiting for somebody to come from the government to give us some more stimulus money. Uh, it's us. We're the change. We thank you. We thank you for that." Next is our awardee. Uh, the Harper Cup awardee. We're going to honor 2019, 2020, and 2021 today. And uh, who is going to honor us with uh, overseeing that is our Mary Davis, our uh, 27th Ward Committee Woman, Federation of Block Units, uh, prior everything, and has been my right hand, and, uh, and, and I respect her a lot. She is a woman that does many things and today we're going to get those awards ready and present those to our um, to our members. Mary Davis. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have to remember what hat I have on because truly, once an urban leaguer under the FBU, always a FBU because it starts in the heart. You, it's always in the heart and whatever you do, you're going to always go back to where you started from. Uh, the membership committee is proud to assist the Federation president with presenting the distinguished and prestigious award that these awardees has gone beyond the call of duty. They have stepped out of the box by recruiting as you go. You know, you recruit as you go as a block unit member. You want to tell everyone about the FBU. So recruiting as they go by taking the action and by the work they do on their blocks. Okay. They pay their dues yearly. They don't ask what is next. They say, what else can I do to be of assistance? So how do you go about picking a person for the Hopper's Cup? It has been in existence almost 30 years. The Harper Cup was initiated in the honor of the wife and family of a former Federation Block Unit President, Mr. Cleotha L. Hopper. It has been awarded each year to a member of the Block Units who has consistently, that's the key word, consistently gone above the call of duty. So at this time, uh, when you become a member of the Federation, you want to see what is to be done and say, if not, if uh, who, if not me, then who? All right, that is the attitude you have. So the history will begin now with the Hopper Cup first. Ms. Christina will bring the person up that fit these guidelines that I have just gone over with you. We just have two here. Okay. You have the 2019 one here. Okay. 
Oh, I am really honored to present this next lady up for this prestigious award. Ms. Gant of the E-Council. She is the former council chair. Being a council chair is a big deal. So she came in enthusiastic, had great ideas to make her council flourish. And that's what's caught our eye. And the president was very impressed that she didn't have to ask her to do anything. She always called and said, what do you want me to do? Or I have this idea, what do you think? That is a true, true trooper of the FBU. So Ms. Gant, come and receive your award from our Federation president. She's a true example for all of us to follow. Yes. Thank you. You have anything to say? It's such an honor to receive this award. Um, my work with the Federation has been kind of twofold. Um, I've learned a lot, and I hope that in turn I've taught things to my neighbors to help them in the community. Um, I really do appreciate the honor, and it's been a pleasure serving as the Air E Council chairperson. Thank you. Since the other two recipients are not here, you want to go to the great creek. Oh, all right. We have a new addition to our federation, the new FBU, and that is South City. And they are in the house today. Mr. Craig Smith is our next honoree to receive this prestigious award. All right, that is presented to him by our president. Say one word, um, Mr. Craig Smith is a uh, he is a um, a uh, past. Uh, well, all of them. I think if you keep your don't you keep your titles and names forever. Yes. So yes. you know, so all of them. Uh, which war time? The twins war. And so yes. Craig came to us through Miss D Brown. Yes. And Miss D Brown moved, and she was our chairperson, and we established the South City. We've always had block units in this over in South City. But we decided to uh, add that to it to us since it was separated. Once was together and then put together and back. So we wanted to bring that South City back because it is a vibrant area. And Miss D. Brown came excited. She did all kind of things, and we just ran with her, ran behind her. And this was her right hand man. So when he's accepting, he's accepting today on behalf of D. Brown. But she did not want to uh, keep on her name. She wanted to make sure it went to Craig. And Miss Erin, I think Miss Erin is still here. And Miss Erin can come on up. Miss yeah, Riley. Uh, when, when she showed up, they showed up. Yeah. And so I did put the one thing, I know I was having trouble bringing these, so we will have to get it back to you. Uh, but I must have clapped for something happened. But anyway, okay. I, I want to present it to the South City Council, Craig Schmidt and Erin Riley, because they have done an awesome job. The same thing like Miss Gant. You yes. didn't have to say nothing. You didn't have to do nothing. Yes. They just showed up and they did everything. They brought their own water. They brought their own food. They did yes. whatever was needed to yes. do. Uh, Craig, to come up here yeah. and we'll I wanted to make sure that I reflected what George Levon said earlier, and that is that all of our mission throughout this entire city, yeah. north, south, east, west, east side in Illinois, yeah. is to actively empower residents, yeah. all residents, churches, and businesses, block by block, to improve the socioeconomic conditions civil rights, access and opportunity, and the physical environment 
throughout the metropolitan St. Louis neighborhoods. That mission is accomplished by providing information and education and training to block units. I did want to make sure that I reflected on some other people who are here in addition to Aaron, Amanda Davis, who is part of our public safety group, the St. Louis safety group, mm -hmm. Ashley Langston, also part of that safety group, and Rich Saban, who is not here. You know, we talk so much about communication. It took two years for folks to understand that they were truly empowered. And so much today, we have a lot of great communication and yet we are so often separated. It is up to us, all of us, to get that communication out about within our souls, within our families, within our neighborhoods and our blocks, that we have all of that power. Please, as a person from public health, and I realize that it requires more looking behind some of this, please get vaccinated. Thank you. that I come from the healthcare field, so I'm learning about this community. And um, I, I do want to echo that if anybody has any questions about health, then I'm willing, that's my expertise, so I'm willing to help out in, them in any way I can. Thank you. I feel honored. Thank you. All right, a big applause for them. Uh, can, we all, can we give them all the wardies applause right now? Okay, we're going to do the Quarter Century Awardees. Uh, that's, uh, and I want to say a little bit about that. Being in, on the membership committee, when someone comes into um, the block unit, we give the history. So we want you to remember as a block unit member, know the history, know when you started your block unit, know who started it. It goes down in history. So you must keep up with that so that we can keep the years of service that you have been enforced. All right. So the first lady on who I have on the list is from Council A. Their block unit has been in force for 25 years. And that person is block unit, that number is block unit 1017 A Council. And her name is Sharon Hagen. Is she here? Okay. All right. There are two representatives from Area B Council. Block Unit 483, which is Miss Glenda Thornton. And Block Unit 1324, which is Patricia Rose. Area F Council has two representatives as well that are in the 20th century, um, that deserves the 20th century award. And that is uh, Block Unit 972, Mr. Dennis Clack, and Miss Tracy Hill. I know she's here. Who is the block chair of Block Unit 1365. And their awards, oh, you want to come up, Ms. Federic, uh, President of the Federation? <laughs> we will have to um, have awards uh, presented to them, but we're going to do that in a council meeting where we can, uh, we couldn't have everybody come, so where we can present those individuals. So we just want to let you know that between the Harper Cup Award and being a block unit for over 25 years or more, those are prestigious awards. Those are benefits. That tells you there are people that are willing to give back to their community. Uh, area uh, F, Mary Davis and Louise Griffin, they are faithful to Area F. Mm -hmm. Ms. Uh, Louise, you want to keep in the same thing based on Area F? Yes. Uh, now, Miss, we want to let Miss Griffin say something. Because yes. her block unit been in existence. Let her tell you. 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Area F Chair. And also, I'm the block unit of 1113F on Lynn Haven Place. And we have been existing ever since 1974. And we are still in existence. And we have been part of the Federation of Block Units ever since. We are not moved. We're still there. We have members that have died. Only four of them since we started have passed on. And we are still there. And we're still faithful. And we come and we suggest ideas to every member. 
And we say to all our members, you must belong to the blog unit. You must belong to the blog unit. If you live on Lynn Haven, you must belong to the blog unit. That's what we have there, a blog unit. And we are watching you. But benefit me, benefits all of you. What I do for one, we do for all. But we come down here and ask the urban need to give us for one person. We need it for everybody. If you out and you need an air conditioning, we go to the urban need. We don't go just for Louise Griffin, cause she on Lynn Haven, she the chair. We go for everybody that's in need because it's hot outside. If you need food and the food pantry is open and they give you food and you are hungry, we let you know you'll go get it or they'll bring it to you. Your mouth has to be open and you have to speak and let us know. I tell people, we're not mind readers. We don't know what's going on on you. You can't be pride. You can't not want nobody to know your business or you won't get no help. Miss Hill. This is Miss Tracy Hill. Yes. Yes. And uh, you know, we all serve the Lord. He will throw us in some situations. Yes. Miss Hill has been thrown into the Federation of Block. Unit. She didn't know what she was signing up for. <laughs> but her block unit has been in existence over 25 years. She is willing to start that block unit. She is willing to stand up and be the second vice president. Woo! She is willing to do anything to support the Urban League and the Federation of Block Unit. Uh, she she's not gonna say much, but we want her to say thank you. At least. Thank you. <laughs> She brought her daughter, and her daughter is caught up now with us, uh, with you guys. See, I'm still saying us, but it's in me, okay? All right. Thank you so much. Did you want to say something? We're so glad that you decide that you want to be a part of this. Okay. You want to say something? Okay. Thank you so much for coming in and seeing what's ahead and help Miss Simmerall gather more young people. We really need you guys to step up and just run with it and you see what it can do for you. When I joined, and I'm going to sit down, when I joined the Federation and I wrote my letter of resignation, I looked back 40 years ago. And when I came in, I really didn't know this great lady from the Urban League came in and got me and Miss Frenchie kept telling me to go. So I got involved and it was something that was in me that if I don't know these things, there are a lot of people out here in this community that don't know. So if I don't take it upon myself and get this information and give it back, how will they know? It's all about empowerment. It's not about us. Once we take us out of the equation, you will flourish. You will flourish. You be getting awards that the council used to give me and I didn't know I was going to get them until, until I got there. So you definitely want to just work from your heart, not expecting anything, and God will give you great rewards. Thank you all, and I thank the Federation for letting me serve them. We are at the close of our, um, of our 89th Annual Assembly, and again, I thank you for all attending in person. I thank everyone for attending on Facebook or live. And we're just asking everyone to go to the Urban League STL uh, website, go into the membership section and inquire. We really don't want you to inquire. We really just want you to go straight to the, uh, the Federation membership section and just pay your $25. Remember, you do not have to go and talk to your block ahead of time. Just go say, I went and paid our $25. We're going to get the money back. And this block, everybody uh is a block unit member there's no ifs ands about it you are a block unit member because we look out for our block we make sure that our block is well taken care of and uh i just want to again a thank you for uh spending time with us today uh normally uh we would have had a big event where everybody would have been there and just had different resource uh individuals there and know that next Saturday will be our resource event um, section of it. It will be on July, June, June the 26th from 11 to 6. It is in Wellston. We'll have that, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have that address, but please.